Driving can be frustrating, stressful, and sometimes hazardous to your health. In the United States, car crashes kill over 40,000 people each year. But getting behind the wheel today is nothing compared to life on the roads at the turn of the century, when cars jockeyed for space with trolleys, pedestrians, and horse-drawn buggies. The utter chaos on the streets of Cleveland, Ohio in the early 1920s inspired Garrett Morgan, a local businessman and son of a former slave, to design one of the world's most successful life-saving devices. He saw a terrible accident between an automobile uh, and, uh, and a cart, a uh, horse-drawn cart, and the little girl was very seriously injured. Uh, the horse was seriously injured. The horse had to be put to sleep. Clearly, the present system of using traffic cops at busy intersections was not working. They had little signs that they were flipping, saying stop and go, blowing whistles and holding out their arms, uh, and they were always getting sideswiped or hit. Morgan realized a device to control the traffic was needed. He had already successfully patented one life-saving device, the gas mask, which was put to use in World War I. So he put his mind to work, and on November 20th, 1923, he was granted a patent for the country's first traffic signal. His semaphore signal was manually operated, with moving arms to indicate stop, go, and caution. In this position, oncoming traffic is required to stop and cross traffic is allowed to go. To change the flow of traffic, just rotate the signal. Push it down and all traffic is advised to use caution. The first traffic signal was placed on 9th and Euclid, which was at the time the busiest intersection in town and probably the most dangerous intersection too because so much traffic went through downtown. Today, that intersection is still the busiest in the city, but the signal there looks nothing like a Morgan semaphore design. So who made the changes? General Electric, realizing that traffic signals could be a real moneymaker, bought Morgan's patent for $40,000. But instead of using his movable arms design, they switched to colored lights, red for stop and green for go. The railroads have been using these colors at crossings since the 1840s, so General Electric decided to copy. The early lights were manually operated and proved to be quite a novelty. When the small town of Canajoharie, New York received its first light in 1926, the local paper ran an article telling people which color meant what and suggested that men cut out the article and paste it inside their hats to help them remember. Over the years, the lights became automated and soon spread across the globe. Don't forget, anywhere you go in the world, if you're in Cairo, if you're in Zimbabwe, England, no matter where you are in the world, there's a traffic signal, a red, yellow, and green signal waiting for you. And while we all agree a red light can be a nuisance when we're in a hurry, just imagine what life on the roads would be like without Garrett Morgan's invention.